Most of this is a stub. It's just a bunch of stupid stuff to stick together. Nelson Paint Company, 1984. Nelspot 007. A 68 caliber air pistol paint bowl marker. It was originally used to mark trees for inspection or whatever, or cows for a vet or whatever. You'd use color coding. And it was repurposed as a paintball toy gun. It had the ability to fire what we call paintball or splat balls or whatever. And there are other variations of this like gels and water beads and that sort of thing. American gun control activists have called for federal government to regulate and ban the manufacture of sale of toy, gun, toy guns in the 1970s due to the fact that some of the older metal toy, gun, toy guns but uh, could actually do some strange things. Some of them had simulated uh, ammunition. I think I'm having... I, for, I, I forgot it. Tell me how to spell stroke. So anyway, during the 70s, they realized a lot of the old toy guns were full metal. They were made out of... Uh, you know, low gu low grade metal like uh, zinc, but you could make a gun out of one of them if you did some small modifications that started being found. People would make them for various reasons, but the thing about them that was specifically a problem is they looked enough like real guns that police ended up shooting people sometimes. Instead of shooting people in the leg or other risky activities, police officers started doing the most 100% reliable thing they could, killing somebody, including killing a kid recently. 1992, the Department of Commerce, U.S. Code, Federal Regu Regulations, Title 15, subsection, yada, 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 no person shall manufacture, enter into commerce, that means make for sale, ship, transport, or receive any toy or look-alike imitation firearm without approved markings. These may include the following, an orange chip or a barrel plug of a brightly colored or transparent exterior construction of the whole toy. I personally like the completely transparent uh, acrylic ones, but that meant model guns had to be made in such a way that they were visually very different. Space guns, toy guns, that's fine. But they had to get rid of this problem. Now, a lot of you might be saying, or they could just teach police not to shoot. If you look at each individual case, I really don't have a good answer. But let's move on. These restrictions will not apply, and this is the stupid part, this has nothing to do with making this restriction not apply to toys. This had to do with the traditional BB gun, which actually fires a projectile, paintball guns that fire projectiles, pellet guns that fire a projectile, and any other thing that fires a projectile through the force of any combination of mechanical or spring compressed air or gas action, just as long as it doesn't fire gunpowder. And for some damn reason, cap guns, because they did use gunpowder, and some of them could actually fit one of those little round it, it's actually a, a breech cap it's used for you know setting off a muzzle loader specifically uh, 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 cap and ball pistols the, those kind of cap guns have enough force that they can pop just barely a little toy round ball or shell out and you can still make them but because it could cause this even though it was an assembled item not a cartridge it became a banned toy because it made a projectile come out through force of a chemical reaction and explosion but air compressor types could go up to, and I mean this literally, big bore uh, air guns are capable of taking out a deer, and are still legal, and you can still make one. It's one of the few types of guns I'm not covering on this channel because it is actually very dangerous. But they excluded, instead of just excluding any toy gun, they had to make it to where you didn't have to have an orange tip on toy guns that couldn't hurt anybody but still could look like real guns, especially airsoft. Airsoft guns are completely banned in New York City, Washington, D.C., Chicago, and parts of Michigan. Wielding a look-alike or replica gun in public is considered a crime in Chicago because you might be able to use it as a criminal act or is it to keep you from getting killed by the cops by accident. This is where things get a little muddy. 2013 in Massachusetts, a five-year-old made a Lego gun in their after-school class. And that five-year-old was threatened with suspension for making a toy gun. No toy guns. Australia has an appearance law. Anything deemed by police at officer's discretion to resemble, in appearance, a service firearm will be legally regarded as an automatic weapon, automatic firearm, if, it may, if it's made to look at all like a 
Well, service firearm, that means a military gun. Okay, that's like saying the AR-15 because it looks almost exactly like one variation of a military full auto that because it could cause confusion, you're not allowed to have it at all and you will be charged with it carrying a fully automatic weapon even though it's a simulated fully automatic weapon. Suddenly, I don't have a problem with that because I do have a problem with ARs because, not because they're ARs and because they're big scary guns, but because I am anti tactical. It causes problems unnecessarily for the rest of us who just want to be able to trudge through these laws. A toy gun seller, however, in Australia is guilty of unlicensed sale of a firearm and the buyer is guilty of illegal possession of a firearm regardless of the fact that it's not actually a firearm even by their own definition at all period it's literally not a gun this has to do with you you haven't tried to scare anybody you just own it or you're selling one it's a firearm okay let's go on Oregon firearms laws safety act 2015 the private sale and gun show loophole, people call it a loophole, that says that anybody can sell a gun privately to another person if you're not in the business of buying and selling guns, as long as you're not actually skirting the law or bullshitting. They decided to say any transfer, sale, gift, loan, or lease of a firearm to be conducted by or possessed through only can be done through a federal licensed firearm dealer, a federal fi FFL, and force a background check at the s for the seller and the buyer, and the cost of it goes to them. This becomes an effective anywhere from 50 to $200 effective tax on guns. However, I know this little trick. In the state of Oregon, you can ask a police officer to do a background check on you. Same thing they do when they call in your numbers and try to check for wants and warrants. They can also do this because a lot of the firearm sellers in Oregon don't have access to the speedy database that takes only a couple of minutes. So you can literally get away with, it's very little known, but you can tell a police officer, I need you to do a background check on me and the guy who's selling me the gun, or vice versa, so that we can do this legally and I need you to witness it. Because we don't have any FFL people in the area and I'm not going to go through the ATF or whatever because th that's not an Oregon law, it's an Oregon law, not a, not a federal law. Point of sale background check whenever a firearm is sold in Illinois' gun show and also if you buy any firearm in Illinois, Hawaii, Massachusetts, the purchasers are required to pass a background check and obtain a permit. You have to be fully legit and written up and all this kind of stuff. But the extra one in there is that Illinois also has the uh, gun show rule. New Jersey firearm purchase requires a permit to purchase and a permit through a federally licensed firearms dealer having the permit to buy and sell it. Some of these locations, they technically buy it from you for zero dollars and sell it to the other person for zero dollars while the transaction doesn't involve the gun. So that that firearms seller, the FFL person, legally can just confiscate the damn thing if something looks hanky. But that's in Iowa, Michigan, Nebraska, North Carolina, but they only required it for handguns. But in New Jersey, it's the whole Miguel de Gorilla but, uh, for everything. Next, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Washington, D.C. Require this 107 seconds. Someone's actually timed it. Uh, electronic universal background check. Or you can do a really slow snail mail, postal mailed form at the point of sale for all sales of and transfers of all classes of all firearms for all sellers and buyers. You're treated the same way a uh, gun gun shop would be treated. Oh wait a minute, if you take it in for repair they don't have to do the transfer because it's not really being sold or transferred, they're just repairing it. Yeah, it's actually in line with federal rules. Now we get to muddied waters. What is the effect of registering a gun? Now I've talked about toy guns for a reason here. In some areas it's against the law to own a toy gun if it looks too convincing even if you didn't do anything illegal with it. Merely possessing it is a felony. And it's also a felony to make a real gun look like a Nerf gun. Now let's go on. <coughs> A panel of 32 scholars, 32 human beings, 
of criminology, public health, and law. Rated universal background checks as the most effective policy to prevent gun deaths, ranking at number one out of 29 possible gun-related policies that they could review. These 32 people that get cited, they're the actual source for that assertion. That's, that's it. It's 32 humans. Ten years after California's 1991 implementation of a comprehensive background check, firearm homicide and suicide rates was found to have not changed per capita at all. Throughout the state, throughout the areas affected, it did not change suicide rates because it's based on physically finding a gun and shooting yourself with it, not getting a damn background check. And the murder rates stayed about the same. And again, you're more likely, if you're shot with a pistol, to be doing it to yourself. Usually with your own gun. And other state laws that repealed these same things saw no change after that happened. But if a study factored in other variables, this is very important. Changes in the rates of unemployment, poverty, incarceration, burglary, law enforcement officers per capita, then the presence of other laws in that state included into it. Trying to balance it out for all the changes that happened to see if there's an apples and apples problem here, apples to oranges. Background checks did help 15 to 40 percent or was it just the poverty, the unemployment, the burglary, law enforcement officers not being available, general malaise that drove people to... The vast majority of people who possess firearms, I'm having to use that word now because apparently I'm allowed to make a sawed-off shotgun if I make it a certain way, it's just called a firearm and there's no rules against it. There's, that, that literally is acceptable. And what's funny is, because it's not a gun by any of the definitions, I don't have to go through the fucking licensing or registration in the state of Oregon. But I can then walk up to a police officer with it dismantled, describe it, show them the paperwork, say, would you do a check on this? And there's a 50-50 shot, he'll say, I'm not allowed to, that's not really a gun. It's a firearm. I'm not allowed to do it. Because that's what I got told today, by showing them the diagrams. But I can go to prison for taking a bright orange toy plastic gun that's designed to hold a 12-gauge bullet because somebody thought it was a good idea to put a 12-gauge shotgun shell in it. To design it that way. If I make a copy of that thing without going through the freaking process they did to get that little stamp on the side that says it's approved as an exemption to the short ball shotgun rule, I go to jail. But if I make it a see-through toy and make it follow some of these little rules, I won't. So I'm going to make it a toy. Literally make it, it's already bright orange. What the fuck? So anyway, or I can literally make a real sawed-off shotgun, pump action if I want to, unlimited magazine if I can strap it on somehow, belt feed it, and nobody will blink because legally speaking, it's not a damn gun. But do background checks actually fix things? Or is it just another symptom? I don't know. I'm not against any of it or for any of it. I just want it consistent. And it isn't. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.